Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Marketing Mindset Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Marie Mason. Oh, my goodness, we are going to have an amazing show for you today. And I cannot wait to share our guests this week. Her, um, her name is Leanne Lea Lacaba. She is the CEO and founder of U, of two from 2XU Executive Services in the Philippines. And today's topic is on outsourcing and building loyalty with an assistant. Because let's face it, we wear many hats as business owners and and it's much easier to do more about focusing on what you love doing when you have someone helping you and support you. And I could not do what I need to do without the support of my team from past to to present and any future ones. So, oh my gosh. Wanted just to let you know that information, but before we get started with our guests, we will be sharing great tips and ideas on how to make your marketing and mindset work for you and how to learn to set up your business for success using virtual assistants. So make sure you stick around for those action steps that you're going to apply and some great gifts from our show. We have them every week. So before we bring up the guests again, let me make sure we share our top tips of the week. So my tips of this week is, and, and just so you know, last week we talked about the software, right? The, the five key softwares you will need to, um, to, as part of your setup process. And um, I'm going to talk to you about two separate things. One, I'm going to talk to you about the four milestones that we use in our podcasting planning process over at Liberty Virtual Solutions. The first one is set up. The second one is is pre-production. And the third one is post-production. Sorry, the third one is production. And the fourth one is post-production. Sorry, I read that too fast. So anyway, um, and sometimes you can sometimes you can say things and, and it's on the tip of your tongue and you sometimes forget what you're gonna say. And then sometimes you say things too fast. So I'm gonna try to slow down so you can follow along. Um, Part of the setup, we covered the software, right? The five podcast software to produce your podcast and all and quite a few key points uh, last week's and and the last episode that we did on podcasting. And that was really important because you need to also know your why and, you know, all the details related to that. This week, we're going to talk about microphones. That's the step two in the setup process. And I'm going to just pick the top five that I recommend, um, that I've heard other people recommend to me over the years and which ones, and I'll give you my top pick at the end, okay? And you decide which one works best for you. Now, these are going to be more focused on USB microphones because let's face it, there's USB ones and then there's the kind you plug into the wall, right? The USB ones plug into your computer. So the ones that I'm going to recommend that are USB podcasting um, microphones are um, the ones that come up are the Blue Yeti, and that boasts of four spectacular polar patterns, including cardoid, figure eight, omni, stereo, which gives you the flexibility to record in almost any environment because you want to be able to have it somewhat soundproof. Um, just simply because you want to make sure that you give the best audio because quality. One of the biggest um, deterrents from people joining your podcast is that the audio sound is sloppy. Um, that's my polite word. <laughs> I couldn't figure out another one. So just so you know, if your audio and video is shaky or not good quality, it's going to show up in your podcast and people are going to not want to stick around for that because they it's going to distract them. So do your best to clean it up and also have the best equipment so that it can help you. It doesn't have to be super expensive. You could get them on the deals and sales and that's always good um, to for the budget. So um, Blue, Yeti is, Blue Yeti is probably one of the most affordable ones out of there. And the next one in line comes into boasting uh, as unmatched, which is for the DSP options, which is the PreSonus Relevator, which is one of the most advanced podcast uh, microphones to date, actually, which is in May of 2022 when we're recording this. 
Now, it features three selectable polar op patterns so that you can capture a natural sound from multiple different hosts at once. So that's an option for you. Um, the next one is the Shure MV7. It takes the legendary sound of the, M the SM7B and, arg and augments it with incredible onboard DSP capabilities, okay? This is new terminology I'm still learning, so bear with me. <laughs> now, next one in line is AKG Lyra's, and it's more looking like an invention, like in those old podcasting ones from the 50s. Um, and so if you like that vintage look, that's always a bonus. And so it also includes uh, onboard game controls and headphone outputs for zero, zero latency and monitoring. And it's been modern, modernized. So don't let the vintage look fool you. Um, and then the Rode Podcaster is one of the best known microphones for podcasting and is probably got all the bells and whistles that you know you would expect for a microphone to be efficient. My personal favorite is the Blue Yeti. Um, it is nice. It is sleek. Uh, I normally don't show things because we're not, we do, because if you're seeing on the, if you're listening in the audio, you're not going to be able to see it. But if you go to our YouTube channel and Marketing Mindset Podcast, you will get to see it. But I like the Blue Yeti. I also like to have a little um, microphone um, cover just because it helps you get rid of the T's and the, you know, the extra little enunciations and so the blue yeti and it does it could be in blue it could be in red it could be in black and it comes in several different colors you got to figure out what works with your brand and for your podcast so keep in mind that you do have to do brand colors like for your brand for your um show and so we'll talk more about that in another episode but long story short make sure it resonates with you and then it does the has the functions you're looking for in order to produce the best sound quality for your show. Because again, um, what makes or breaks a podcast is the sound and the video, if you do video version. So with that, let me go ahead and bring up our guest because she is waiting so patiently in the background and we are going to get ready to talk to her. I have her come talk to us actually and she's got a fantastic topic that is really going to help you buy back more time in your business how many of you guys spend hours like over 40 hours a week in your business if you're spending over over 40 hours a week in your business you need to listen to our guest today so our guest today is leanne leah lacaba she's a ceo and founder from youtube um sorry not YouTube, from 2XU Executive Services. So she's not from YouTube, just to be clear. And then she also lives in the Philippines. And today's topic is on outsourcing and building loyalty with an assistant. So I'm going to bring up our guest and let's have her come in. And when she comes in, let's give her a warm welcome. Oh my gosh, come on in, take it away and step on up. <laughs> and it is Leanne Leia Lacaba, right? I want to make sure I got that pronunciation correct. Leanne Leia Lacaba, but close enough. Hey, Marie. <laughs> How are you doing? We did a little discussion about, because I'm doing a series which um, we're discussing our podcast process for Liberty Virtual Solutions, because I help um, transformation coaches and other um, compassionate coaches with their planning their podcasts. So I'm giving them like tips on our process and mm -hmm. on our show um, and doing in like little bite-sized chunks. So I'm taking that and sprinkling it into each show um, just to make it engaging and fun and, and so that they can have a clear idea about our process. Um, yeah. So that way they're getting familiar with our style. <laughs> so anyway, um, mm -hmm. figured I'd just do two, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, politely, of course, and, and not, and figuratively. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, I was saying that if, and one of the phrases, uh, questions I asked them is, 
if anyone out there is spending more than 40 hours a week on their business, they need to listen to you on today's show because that means yes, you need help. <laughs> yep. I was exactly one of those it. people at four years ago, I was spending 80 hours a week or more in my business, believe it or not. Because when you're getting mm-hmm. started, you, you, you have that Oh, I need to do everything, and I and, and, mm-hmm. and I don't know how to what to prioritize, and I don't know what tasks I need to be focusing on, and what tasks are better to outsource, and where to outsource, and I didn't even know that Fiverr or any of Upwork or any of those platforms or your agency for that matter even existed. So I'm like, I was clueless. I was, I didn't even know about volunteers. I didn't know any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I wish I had those in the beginning. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Everyone does. Oh my gosh. I really did. So I've gotten wiser and I just pay people Mm -hmm. for the projects that I need done. And that way I'm not over taxing the budget, but at the same time, I'm outsourcing tasks that I'm clearly not suited for. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I've learned, I learn what I'm good at. I've learned what I'm not. And I'm focusing on staying in my zone of genius. And that's what Mm -hmm. we're going to teach today. Right. I think we're going to be giving a lot of tips about that um so Mm -hmm. oh my gosh but first let's get to know about you and um not only so much what you're passionate about because clearly outsourcing is part of it (laughs) you know building Mm -hmm. a team is important but how did you get started in your in your agency I really want to learn a little bit about that first so then we're going to jump into the end of the topics so for me my story goes all the way back when I, uh, I was 15 years old, started working online as a freelance writer, saw that world um, because that was part of one of my goals was to never really work in an office. That was actually, I remember that very distinct wish in my head because um, I would see my mom, she would come home from the office, she would be tired and then she had to do it all over again in the morning. Um, so for me, one of my goals was never to work in an office and I found a way to do that. And then um, when I was uh, 20 years old, I was I got the chance to become a CEO of uh, remote uh, outsource CEO of a publishing company taught me a lot about managing and hiring online. And then I went ahead and like, why not do this myself? Why not do this as a service? Um, because at that point, I've never really done a service type company other than my own services um, and kind of launched 2XU after kind of doing a launch of it as a course first on how to hire a virtual assistant. One of our students said, hey, can I just pay you to do this? Um, I don't want to do this on my own. <laughs> uh, and that's essentially how we started 2XU. That's awesome. And how many years ago was that again? Three years now, almost. Oh, well, see, you've only yeah. been, I've only been in business one more year, maybe, and I'm getting ready to hit my five-year mark in the summertime. So, um, so a couple more years. So, like I said, I wish you were around when mm. I, <laughs> when I started because, oh my gosh. Um, so it just was one of those things where, like I said, you need to learn to prioritize your tasks, Right and yep. figure out what is your zone of genius and what is really worth sending out to a um, to a virtual assistant. And um, mm-hmm. before we get into that, um, I think we've already talked about some of that stuff. What are some of the, what are the three things someone has to keep in mind when working with a virtual assistant? Because, um, and before, and actually, yeah, let's start with that one. Then I want to add in um, another question to that is, um, what tasks can you outsource to a virtual assistant? Those are the two main questions we can start off with. Okay. Yeah. So on the three things someone can keep in mind when working with a virtual assistant, it's uh, down to what we've kind of called as like the, what we call like scale you formula. So it's first one is, uh, something you already mentioned is giving them the right tasks. A lot of the time we end up outsourcing things that we shouldn't like sales. A lot of people that are always tempted to outsource their sales first and that's always uh, where they fail the most because you're literally giving someone else the power to be able to bring in money for your company um, without knowing how to do that yourself. Uh, there's also making sure that it is the tasks that uh, can run um, without you. 
because there's going to be things that, uh, like for example, for my YouTube channel, I'm the only one who can record videos for my YouTube channel, but everything else I can give to my assistant. Uh, and then the next one is basically making sure that you have systems in place. So it could be documenting how you're doing certain things. It could be documenting how a project is started and ended. So then there is something for someone else to follow or to recreate. And you're not the only one who knows certain tasks. When you're an entrepreneur, you're kind of the only one who knows how to like, for example, get a client or fulfill your service. And when you have a virtual assistant, you need to start giving that to someone else. And then the last thing, the third thing is building loyalty. It's so important that if you want someone to be there for you the long term, it's important that you build that loyalty, that friendship or that relationship with them. So they will want to work with you um, for the long run. No, that is absolutely true. And um, the, that's, that's brilliant. So what those are the good, good three things that I wanted to have you cover. But the next one is what tasks are good to outsource? Because you mentioned how it's not necessarily a good idea to outsource sales and marketing right away until you've tested it out yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So, but once you've tested it out, then by all means, send it out. Because I've already yeah. tested it out. I've um, worked it out and I've done more of the marketing side of things I send out. Mm -hmm. I still do more of the sales calls. I've tried yeah. to do the sales calls and outsource it, but found that I'm much better at doing that myself for right now. Um, mm -hmm. But I would like for someone eventually to take over that process, but um, I'm still fine tuning my process. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that's all part of, part of it, yeah. And when you're doing those sales calls, what helps me, and I don't know if this helps you, is record the calls. And that mm -hmm. way you have um, clarity about what was said. And also you can share that with the people that you're going to train because then they can see the process of what a mm -hmm. successful call is and what one looks like that's not a successful call. And they can do that comparison and contrasting and, and you can help them make their teaching points on that, right? So mm -hmm. my other question yeah. is, what other tasks would you recommend? Because what I keep telling my students and also my um, clients is that if you're spending your time doing all those admin back end tasks mm -hmm. and you're spending less time focusing on working with clients and working with, uh, you know, discovery calls and, waste, and time wasters, you know, there's always those time wasters. What is it that's the best task to outsource to a virtual assistant to get off our plates? Just so I, I mean, just to get us a good picture, because mm -hmm. people might be unclear about that. So let's just paint that picture for them. So the way that we usually walk this process through for, through our clients is what we call the 80-20 assessment. So it's based off of the Pareto principle where, you know, uh, 20% of the things that you're doing right now is actually bringing in 80% of the results. And then uh, that the, you still have to do the rest of the 80% of the work to be able to get the 20, the, the, the rest of the 20%. So for example, for me, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, for my YouTube channel, I'm still the one doing the recording. I'm still the one who um, uh, makes sure that it, it's proper and uploads right um, but then my assistant takes care of everything else like she does the editing she does the creating the thumbnail she creates a description she helps me share it on social media so I've delegated the rest and maybe focus on the thing that um, makes the most sense and of course I did most of the the sort of the work of the recording the video but she still had to do the rest so we can get the full 100% uh, because then if I just uploaded a raw video yes that will work but then uh, there's no the quality into it uh, so that's kind of a good example of where you can start is look at any repetitive tasks that you have in your business what are things that you don't really have to necessarily do but they need to get done to be able to move things forward so anything from you know the typical email management or calendar management which is just sending out calendar invites or double checking that you haven't double booked yourself. Um, it could also be uh, just file management, just cleaning up your, your Google Docs or your Dropbox or whatever it is, um, depending on where you're at in your business. It's also um, like it, the, the example that I gave was just content creation, like editing videos or creating social media posts and then posting those social media posts. Anything that, again, is important to your business needs to get done, but it's too, so repetitive that you don't need any other creativity or your own brain power in it. It's just something that um, can be done by someone else really easily. Right. And I will say like writing, writing um, 
editing and also formatting documents mm -hmm. is another yep. repetitive task that yep. is tedious to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, these are, are, are perfect ones. Yeah, not to mention now also, I would say like data entry is another one that bores me to tear. Mm -hmm. um, the generation because, is another one. Yeah, and lead generation is another one. Um, that's always a good one. And that one is something mm -hmm. I do try to outsource as much as possible, but it doesn't mean that I don't too, um, but it's more of, you know, work together kind of thing. So work together with your team on that one. But yeah, yep. so those are great examples because, you know, those are your day-to-day -day operational tasks. And I'm going to say even uh, budgeting, but even your... Um, not, not the word budgeting, but it's your um, reconciling, um, accounting, your accounting, um, mm -hmm. you know, from, and yeah, bookkeeping. That's the word I'm looking mm -hmm. for. Um, it's one of those tip of the tongue moments. <laughs> so your no bookkeeping worries. tasks. Thank you. It's like from like reconciling your accounts to to making sure you keep track of receipts, to sending out invoices, sending out invoices, because let's face it, what happens if you are unable to do all that, you need a, someone to handle that task for you mm -hmm. so that your business keeps running, because um, you want someone to be able to take over that role for you, and, and a virtual assistant can do that, and there's so yeah. many good ones out there, so, and you have a few, I'm sure, that handles that task as well, so. Mm -hmm. Right, so those are just some of the things I wanted to make sure that people can sit down and I want them to understand, let's, you wanna prioritize it and map out the things that are real time wasters for you that take up mental energy and time that you don't mm -hmm. need to be devoting to so that you can focus, yep. like I said, on your zone of genius and what you really are gifted and talented on doing and love doing. Um, mm -hmm. That way you can be more passionate about your business and grow it. Oh yeah. Spend more time growing it and fulfilling the you know all the orders and if you do that kind of work but whatever it is that mm -hmm. you're doing your delivery you want to focus yep. more on those than the creative side of things rather than the day-to-day -day stuff and that yep. when hiring a virtual assistant is crucial now you did mention something about i want to ask you two questions follow-up questions from what you talked about is um it's going to one is going to be on systems, creating systems, and then mm -hmm. the other one's going to be creating um, team loyalty, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think those are important that we that need to be addressed because um, I also want, and not just team loyalty, also the training of your team, because I think that's also important because sometimes people will get a viable assistant and they throw them to the wolves and they literally yeah. expect them to know everything. However, they don't know your systems. They don't know your processes. They don't know where to access things. I get that from my students all the time. They're like, I'm starting this new job. I am overwhelmed and I don't even know where to begin because they haven't trained me. They're just throwing me mm -hmm. tasks and I'm like, I have no idea where anything is. And mm -hmm. they're like, be proactive, ask them. because <laughs> yep. It's really un unfair to your your team members to expect them to know absolutely everything. They know the skills, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but they don't know your systems, their policies, their processes, or how to access your software or how to access anything that you're doing. So could you talk to us about that piece of it, starting with the systems and then the training and the loyalty? Let's go in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on the system side, um, like I mentioned earlier, like a lot of people usually overlook that, that, but it's one of the easiest ways that you can free yourself up is if someone else is doing the tasks or the things that you are um, doing. So then the way that you do that is creating documentation, is writing down um, the easiest way to usually uh, explain it to people is think of it as creating a recipe. If you're writing up a recipe for carbonara, um, make sure that when someone follows it, it doesn't become spaghetti. Uh, uh, so that's the main thing to always keep in mind is you want to write down every single thing that you're doing write down the step-by-step -step process of how you're able to get there, how you're able to create that carbonara, you know, making sure you use white sauce instead of red sauce. Um, so then when someone else follows it, they get the same results as you. So then if even if they don't do it 100% the same way as you do, at least 80%, that's good enough. And then they'll develop and grow into that role a little bit more. Uh, and then the fun thing is you can even just record yourself doing the task and kind of walk 
talking through it. And then the other person, your virtual assistant can be the one to create the recipe and write it down. And then you just go ahead and edit instead of you creating something, you're just documenting and then editing um, once they have that system. Now, that funny thing is, is it works both sides. Like if you were assistant needed to take a day off or a few days off and they wrote down what it is that they do, they're able to take that day off because then for the time, you know, it could be a family emergency or they just really needed to rest. You're able to look at the tasks that they were doing and then create documentation uh, with the documentation that they created, follow it and just know like, oh, this is how they do, you know, this, this is how they do the Facebook posts. This is how they um, message people on LinkedIn. So that it creates freedom on both sides. And then when it comes to um, team training and loyalty, basically, um, there's two things. So on the loyalty side, uh, it's really basically just treating them like a human. Like a lot of people, um, like our the, the, the biggest distinction that I can probably say with our, our virtual assistant company is we're not a revolving door of hiring. It we, Our aim is that our assistants stay with their clients for a minimum of two to five years. Um, and then ongoing, you know, people change, people have different goals and all of that. We usually try to part as friends, but just kind of treat them as a person. Don't treat them as someone who's easily replaceable. Treat them as someone that you want in your business, because that's one of the reasons or ways that you can build that loyalty. It's also as simple as checking in on them, as just asking them like, hey, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Because it breaks their brain of like, wait, you... I can tell you if something's wrong. I can tell you if, if I'm missing something. Basically, uh, exactly what you said earlier, Marie, of like some people just throw people, uh, new people into the, to the wolves to figure things out on themselves. But when you just ask, how are you? Do you need anything? It's letting them know like, oh yeah, he cares like, or she cares or like this is not just the usual company that I can work for. Um, in the Philippines, it's rude if you don't ask about family it's rude if you don't memorize your family's members names even though they have like six cousins and like seven siblings um it's just part of our culture to check in on people so then adding that that um family feel essentially um, helps building and building that loyalty and then on the other side of it with the training it's just literally writing down what are the things if you were a complete newbie what are things that you've gone through what other books and courses would help someone who has no idea even though it, let's say that they did have experience before working with you they don't have experience what it's like being with you your systems your processes someone who has been a social media um, expert, for example, for the last five years, would, wouldn't know how it is um, that you've been so successful on Facebook, for example, or on social media, on, on your other social media platforms. So it's keeping in mind that, yes, they might be experienced, might be hiring someone who is top notch and everything, but if they have no idea how you run things, how you walk things through, then um, then they will they'll just fail. They're just, you're just setting people up to fail, um, which is where the documentation and the systems comes in because then it's easier to just train them because you just hand them a video like, here, study this, and then you learn more. And then you are also developing their soft skills and their hard skills. You're giving them books to uh, grow their mindset or their own confidence or self-awareness just so as they're, as they're working with you, they are more aware of like, oh yeah, I can do this or I can suggest this or I can be more proactive in this. It's giving them the opportunity to think for themselves really. Perfect. Yeah, one of the things that I um, do, I mean, I literally follow what you were saying with my team. What I do is I make sure they get on a video training with me not and before I, and I'm working on developing, pulling together all my content, video training content, because I'm putting together, um, I have some written documentation, but I, I'm really trying to make sure that I have more of a SOP standing order process because I want them to have the clarity of how we walk through things. So I've been, most of it's written on documents, but I'm trying to get more on the video recorded side because that way they have any, sometimes the audio and video can help, you know, make it more clear. Um, sometimes we think better on our, when we talk than when we write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes, it depends exactly. on the person. But um, long story short, it's really good that you do help them develop their skills. I'm always a big believer in encouraging people to work on their skills and, and improve on their skills. And, you know, um, I don't mind if they even share, teach me something. I'm not above not being, uh, I'm one of those people that's, you have to always listen to me. Um, I just find that a little bit offensive. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. always, there's a, if, you know, if they have a skill set that I'm not strong in, which usually when I hire somebody, that's the case. 
I usually teach to have them teach me a few tricks mm -hmm. and tips that I will implement myself and make that part of my process. And um, everybody who's come to my team over the last four years, it's been amazing. Some have stuck with me for two years and longer, mm -hmm. and some have come and gone because they were just interns and they were just trying to get, you know, was enough experience. Experience, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. So I do have a combination of long term and um, what's the word and long term loyalty people and those who. Like I said, they're just there for a season. And I mm -hmm. wanna make sure I always add value. So we talk about mindset. I always ask them where, how they're doing. What is it that they need to complete their tasks? And if they have a challenge, I say, don't do the blame game pointing fingers and who did what right, wrong or whatever. Let's solve the problem. And if you need help solving the problem, I will give you some feedback and suggestions. You decide what mm -hmm. you do from there. But always make sure that we focus on being proactive and not yep. reactive. It is so quick exactly. to say reactive and do the blame game. Oh my gosh, I have seen teams go south when that happens. Mm -hmm. And so I told people, I had that in at one point and I had to stop it. And I finally said, look, I don't want us to be reactive and do the blame game. I want us to be proactive and let's solve the problem together. So once mm -hmm. they had that concept wrapped in mind, it's made it so much easier to work with them. And mm -hmm. proactive VA is all going to have much more better time finding loyal clients because yep. they're problem solvers. They don't sit there and worry about the, the nitpicky stuff. They get things done and they figure out exactly. ways to get they think out of the box to get stuff done, right? Mm -hmm. And that's super important is that you think out of the box to get things done, but make sure you check, of course, with the person you're working with to make sure that, that follows and aligns with their mission, with their vision, and their goals. If, and I want to have you talk about that. When you're working with virtual assistants and you're training them, are you teaching them the about the learning about the clients? business and about their mission, vision, goals. And, and can you walk us through that? I meant to ask you about that. So that even happens all the way to in the application process. So one of the things that we require them is before they even jump into the interview with me, um, which is the initial interview at this point is still with me, that they need to have researched the client already. Right? And I ask them specific client specific questions also during the interview, because then it tests, okay, how much have you dived into so far with what you found on the website or the or on Facebook? And then um, how does that align with you? Does that actually make sense for where you actually want to go in life? So we kind of just make sure that they have that uh, base knowledge. And then once they're actually hired and working with the client, in the first two to four weeks, I actually recommend that they jump into a five to 10 minute call every day to just sync up. That's literally it. It's just them mentioning, okay, these are my top priority tasks for the day. Um, do you have anything else to add to that? Uh, and then if they had any questions, then that's going to be the area for them to ask questions. If the client wants to train them on a specific task, it's the time to train them. But it's kind of just an open thing where they're able to just go on and uh, every day they know that they can, can they can bring things up with their client. That's one of the fastest ways that they've been able to build that loyalty because you're just talking to them every day and you're building that relationship with them. Brilliant. And that's super important is to, and I think one of the things I've heard from people that work with me or I've had people who I worked with that have told me about their experiences with client with with working with virtual assistants how important it is to build that know like and trust right and that's a mm -hmm. great way to yeah, build yeah. that know like and trust factor and um, a proper business relationship um, mm -hmm. because you need to know where the boundaries are right yep and it's exactly. okay it's, and, 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 and you know um, I always establish like my time uh, when, when, you know, because sometimes I work with people from different cultures, time zones. So I have to let them know I'm available to chat during these times. Mm -hmm. I'm not always available to chat in my evenings, especially after a certain hour, because I'm trying to get ready to go to bed <laughs> yep. Yep. or yep. eat exactly. or whatever. So it's, and, and that's something that people have to keep that in mind is also, you know, learn about their boundaries, learn about what it is that when's a good time to chat and how to communicate is important, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, those that's, are some. Yeah, and yeah. that's something that we train in is like your communication style has to match with the kind of person you're looking for. You wanna 
ask them during the interview process, like, are you someone who's more straightforward or you like a little bit more humor or warmth? Depending on the kind of person that you are, you would want one, one or the other or sometimes a little bit of someone in between. Um, because then if you are someone who's more straightforward and the person you're talking to is a little bit more bubbly, then it might not work out. Or if you're someone who likes the asking, how are you, before getting to the, you know, you like small talk before getting straight to the point, then you need someone who's so comfortable with that as well. Right. And it's good to be able to match the personality types too, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about the personality types. Of, of mm -hmm. what's, what's a good personality type to match with a certain client and the virtual assistant? What would be like a good, I, you know, because I know there's different personality types. So give me just one example of a personality type that would match well with a virtual assistant um, mm -hmm. personalities because you want to make sure you check on the personality too, right? So one mm -hmm. aspect. There. So the most common one, and this is actually based off of the book called Rocket Fuel, um, is just creator and implementer. So that's kind of like the most distinct um, when you're trying to look at someone who's a founder and someone who is a head of operations is you have this creator or in terms of the book E-Myth by um, Michael Gerber, um, he talks about like the entrepreneur and the uh, manager. So you're looking at someone who has this big vision, big goal about their, their business, how they want to grow it, how they want to go go the distance and you know have this different outcome and then you have the implementer you have the person who's actually going to take the steps to make sure that whatever the 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 entrepreneur's goal is to make sure that it actually starts getting um implemented and actually getting done the, that's the most common one is and that's happened over and over again um most of our clients are just some variety of that having that big vision and then having their assistant kind of following along in the background um tweaking things making things better uh so then they can actually reach that goal Perfect. Yeah, I was just going to uh, touch on that because it's so important that finding that right personality fit. Um, some of the biggest clashes was, okay, you'll find this kind of humorous. I once had a business manager, and I haven't had too many business managers because I decided I'm better off managing for a while. Um, but after the first two, I was like done with the management. But long story mm -hmm. short, this one well-meaning manager told me one day, Marie, you never do anything normal. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm really like, he meant it as like, you know, not in a mean way, but it was just more like it came across like, you need to do something normal. I'm really like, so I kind of almost took it as a compliment because that's just my personality type. And I said, well, that's good because if I did everything normal, I would never get noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's very true. So it's always important. And we did have a bit of a conflict, but we did develop a good relationship. And so we're still friends mm -hmm. today. But the long story short of it is, it's always important to make sure that you guys are on the same page when with mm -hmm. the visions and, and, and also... Um, just getting just overall getting along because if you're not going to get along with somebody it's really not worth trying to keep them because yep. it's going to be detrimental for both of you um so that is perfect now we're going to wrap up pretty soon but i think i've got another question for you and then mm -hmm. um we're going to dive into your offer because i know you've got an offer for people so um the, i think the last um Okay, making sure I keep track of my, my notes here. Um, I always like to do little cheat sheets. So what is the advice you have for someone who really wants to get started with a virtual assistant? What would be like the first steps you want them to do? Don't think of your assistant as a uniform. So um, earlier when we talked about like different tasks an assistant can do, you know, email management, bookkeeping, um, could be also uh, maintaining your website. These are all tasks that yes, they can definitely do, but don't expect them to do all of them. Um, you know, that's that's a mis common mistake that I see all the time is just because you were the one who set up your website, you were the one who set up your QuickBooks account and all of that just uh, means that your assistant should be able to do everything else. But you are literally delegating things off of you because you can't do them anymore or it's not your forte. So don't assume that it'll be um, opposite for your assistant. They're, they're also just one person. So one of the things I always recommend is just find the top three tasks that you need done in your business and then have your assistant focus on that. Later on, they can start picking up on the other tasks as well. Probably, not, again, not everything um, because some of them you will need an expert um, to work on, but just 
keeping in mind that they're not going to be this perfect person right off the bat. It's going to be tweaking. It's all going to be working out and seeing if it works. Um, kind of like when you go into a relationship, um, just don't expect them to be just everything and perfect all of them all at once. That's really good because I think one of the things I did do early on is I expected them to do like everything, and I'm like, well, all the key priority stuff. And what I realized was what you just said is really the top three for especially when they're first working with you and then mm -hmm. ask them when you work with them for about three months and then because give them that that time frame to kind of get comfortable with it and you know as they mm -hmm. start getting comfortable they're asking if they want more um work and they're ready if they're, if they're kind of comfortable with what they've done and they're ready to move forward on something else then just add one more task at a time mm -hmm. and let them and here's one of the things i wanted to mention and i think you probably would would have a, an opinion on that too when you give somebody a task have them own it have them sit there and really make it their pro part of their process and give them that space for creativity um yep. give them of course the framework that you need and of course what your details are you know for it but and you know make sure you have their their um the stuff that they need to accomplish the task but at the same time let them own their space because you don't want to sit there and spend all the time micromanaging people yeah. one of the biggest problems i had when i was doing virtual assistant work for some of my clients was a micro and also as an assistant too i used to do it uh, in person stuff too years ago um but long story short i found that when someone micromanaged me it really made it hard for me to be creative and really mm -hmm. um it stifled my energy so you have to keep that in mind even virtual assistants have to have um a good rhythm and energy and be able to give them give them the license to be creative you know i always like to sit there and mm -hmm. say just show me something that you know create it and then we can tweak it along the way and then give them good positive feedback like would you like can we tweak it like this not the yep. eh, you know not being the negative side but do it in like a positive kind of format mm -hmm. and, and feedback because it's important that people get a positive feedback so um because it really and i always try to be encouraging and say oh you did such a great job with this and you i will focus give them on what that. you want them to do right and it really helps and then also another tip is don't be afraid to give them bonuses when they mm -hmm. bonus tips if they do an excellent job um i've tried to do better about that than and i probably wasn't as good about it in the, in the, in the beginning because my budget wasn't there but um a lot of it was you know people were asking more for tips some were like i've learned that i'll give like 10 to 15 percent uh tip on average if there's something I feel like has been a good job, um, if mm -hmm. they go above and beyond, if they go beyond my expectations, get something in on time or do go, like I said, do something that little extra, I'll give yep. them extra. And then I, that's another way to build the royalty is if you give them extra, you know, little tips, it's okay. Um, and depending on who they work for, it depends on, you know, if they work for your agency, whether you're allowed to tip them or not. That's another, that's a good question. Do they, are you allowed to tip your virtual assistants? Yes, that's all part of our our own uh, sort of fee is like a flat fee. So like the flat fee is covered um, anytime we give them bonuses or give them raises or if you if you give them training. Um, so for us, like we even have a fun little thing where every week um, everyone kind of talks about like whether their wins, what are the things that they did that week um, and what are they planning to do. And then everyone votes of who is the person who kicked butt in the last week. And then we roll a, uh, we have a D&D &D dice. We rolled a D4 dice and each one has a corresponding bonus to it. So one is they actually get a paid day off. That's one of the things that we, we um, is part of the bonuses. The second one is they're able to, um, you know, we buy them coffee or tea. Um, the third one is they actually get a book. Um, from from our bookstore. And the fourth one is they get to pick from any of the three that they want. So yes, that is. And if they did a exceptional job, then I, I'm never shy to give them a bonus or if they're if they're excelling at what they're doing, then I give them a raise outright. So it really depends on um, their own gauges of how they've performed. And of course, when the client says, oh my God, this person just solved this problem that I've had for 10 years, uh, then they also are um, more than happy to give a bonus. And then I add a bonus on top of that. Um, in fact, um, I 
think two years ago, we had an assistant who really needed an iPad a keyboard. And of course, that's a little bit expensive. So what the client did was like, hey, I'll pay for half. And I matched it. I was like, okay, no worries. I'll, I'll match it and I'll pay for the other half. So then the assistant just now has a um, iPad keyboard that they use for work. So it really depends, but like, keep in mind that when you, like I said earlier, you want to focus on what it is that you want them to be doing more rather than always berating them and telling them what you don't want. Perfect. Yep, exactly. Because you get what you, you get, what you complain about. <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. uh, and you also get what you don't, you know, you, you have to, what they call manifest what you want. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's always, what's the old phrase? You can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. <laughs> yep. So yep. be kind, be kind, mm -hmm. don't be mean. And I have seen how it can be I was my students have come to me and said and and told me their horror stories but they've also told me the ones that they really love and focus on the people exactly. you really want to work with right that's the key focus on who you mm -hmm. really like you said aligns with what you want who's going to treat you with respect make sure that you can develop a relationship with you if you connect with them as a human being you're going to eventually connect with them as someone who you could work with long term and mm -hmm. build that loyalty, build that trust and make sure it's mutual. Because I mean, if it's not mutual, oh, yeah. it's not going to work. So it doesn't make sense. Exactly. Um, I don't even know what I was going to say on that one, but that's okay. Long story short. So let's go ahead and jump into, uh, you already gave us kind of an act step for um, as far as, you know, making sure that you when you when you the for the first steps for someone to get started with a virtual system um make sure they focus on delegating the top three book tasks to focus on and not overwhelm them let them give them about roughly what we suggested was a roughly a 90 day window get them to get mm -hmm. comfortable with those tasks before you start moving on to the next one and sprinkle them in don't overwhelm them, right those that was our that was our action tips right that we mm -hmm. can get started with so what is your call to action what is your gift for our audience today so to make things easier when it comes to getting to know what tasks to give them is we do have a whole pdf of 103 tasks uh, that you can delegate to a virtual assistant these are the common tasks that a lot of our clients have given to their assistants and ones that we've even given to our assistants so this is just a good guide again keep in mind to just focus on top three tasks or three things to focus on. Um, but it's a good list to look at. and like, oh yeah, I do, I'm doing that in my business or even, um, oh yeah, I've been meaning to do that in my business. So it's just a good list to kind of go over and learn more about. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. And you want to give, share that link with us? Yep. It's just 2xyou.com slash 103 tasks. So 2xyou.com 103, uh, 103, I mean, uh, tasks. And then uh, you just kind of grab the uh, PDF. Perfect. I think that is super, super fun. And I can't wait to share that. With, get down. I think I downloaded it, but I will double check and make sure because um, who knows how long ago that was when I checked on it. But I always like to view... Um, the gifts that people give us and because usually the stuff that you guys give are like but as my um co-coach Heidi says in the strategy lady academy she says it's very posh <laughs> mm -hmm. so you all get some really nice posh gifts so um anyway I just wanted to say thank you so much for being a fantastic guest we are wrapping up on today's show already, believe it or not. I can't believe we're actually going to be close to on time. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to keep it within a certain time frame just because I want to respect everyone's time and not wear out our audience too much. <laughs> so anyway, you gave some very valuable tips today and, and Lee, Lee Ann, right? Just making sure. Mm -hmm. And then um, our, it's really to help our audience grow their business and their mindset. And mm -hmm. also, um, really want to have you take and encourage that offer that you got and go to her website, which is 2xu.com forward slash 103 tasks and download her free PDF so you can figure out what tasks that you might not have thought of, um, including like mm -hmm. websites and stuff that you mentioned. And there's so many different tasks out there and pick the top three. I would recommend that, right? Pick the top three that you would want to delegate to a virtual assistant today. And definitely yep. reach out to Leanne. She is so much fun to talk to. 
and I'm sure she could give you a great flat rate and discuss all of those details based on the number of hours that you need a virtual assistant right and according to the task and she can mm -hmm. give you an estimate on that so I would encourage you to actually go to her website and schedule a call with her she's really fun to talk to and is knowledgeable in her field and great people to work with so I want to encourage you to take it it will be on our YouTube channel and we are slowly loading up some of our our podcast we are over two years worth of podcasts we got to load up on our website so my web developer and I are working on a process to do that and it is it's been it's it's one of those tedious processes that eventually we're going to have a first need to do that get some outsourced mm -hmm. out with that eventually so anyway but long story, long story short you're going to be so glad that you grabbed that list because it's really more of prioritizing your time so take a look at that list check the for top three ones that really are things that are too time consuming that you want that you just don't love doing anymore and call up leanne um and mm -hmm. ask her do you have a virtual assistant that can do these three tasks <laughs> exactly that's my tip for the day so anyway long story short please make sure that you go do that um we're also wrapping up our um, 21 2022 school year stacks um, backpack special um, for every $45 backpack a lucky teacher in the US or Canada because we're only shipping in US and Canada currently will get a $5 gift card towards class and supplies I will probably do this for the month of May the rest of May and I will and then starting in June because so many schools start closing down for the year for the school for the summer months uh in our area so they start closing down close to the beginning of june the middle of june and some at the end of may so i will only do it through memorial day weekend and then i will stop promoting our um, backpacks and you are also welcome to get um anything like our wonderful mugs which i'm going to be changing the logo on these pretty soon and then the hats we also have t-shirts and other goodies the uh, water bottles there are so many goodies it'll be great for things to do and that you can use on your summer trips um because our teachers are great for just bumming around and doing stuff like gardening i've been known to throw on a t-shirt and go gardening what can you say so you know or swimming you know you never know so we would love to have you do some summer backpacking and you know we got backpacks as well so make sure you check out the website and um when it all proceeds um really go to fund our 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 podcast and the rest of it we do share with the community uh so we are really really focused on helping support teachers is oh my gosh i am so grateful that 2022 the classrooms opened up in our area so thank you for the teachers out there and from being a teacher myself for 20 years i really appreciate what you're doing this year so um it's a thankless job, but we want to thank you and recognize you. And all of the people that are watching the show, we love and appreciate you. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Make sure you subscribe, share, and comment, and like. And we love our audience. You guys are fantastic, so keep rocking at it. And in the meantime, come back next week uh, for more tips and ideas on how to make your marketing and mindset work for you and learn how to set up your business for success and hopefully with more support from Liam's virtual assistants. <laughs> and that'll be great. So we stream on our YouTube channel every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Make sure, like I said, you like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss another show. Till next time, I'm your host, Ray Mason, with our guest, Leanne. And we're saying goodbye for now for the Marketing Mindset Podcast. And that ends this week's show. And you have a great week. Bye.